Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 816. And if you want to download this workbook, Excel Magic Trick 815 to 818, click on the link below the video. Hey, back in Excel Magic Trick 814, I compare, we saw how to compare two lists and extract items in second list that were not in list one. Now, this was about a single column. This one is taken it one step further. We're going to compare two tables. So here's uh, table two. Oh, and I have a. Uh, this should say table, right? Because this table is one. this has got records, and our goal here is to compare the two tables, and table ask the two. question: Are there any records in table two that are not over here? If that's true, then we want to extract them, and we want to do it with a formula. Now we could build a big, huge, uh, gnarly array formula over here, or we could simply add a helper column like we did in this video and get some sort of lookup value, then, then we can just use a simple lookup over here. So here's what we're going to do. The goal is to ask, is this username anywhere in this list? Or for us, it's really, is it not? Right? So you can see HIG is, TRAD is, HYYUP is not in this list, so we need to extract the whole record and list it as the first one here. All right. Well, we can compare single items to another column of items using match equals match. I'm going to say, hey, please look up that, comma, and the array is going to be this, and I'm going to hit F4. What we're doing is it's match is looking and seeing it, it if this is anywhere there. And since these are words and they're not sorted, I'm going to comma and do exact match 0. Now what this does is it returns a number, right? It says it's the first one. If I double click and send it down, oh, lots of numbers, meaning the position, right? So DRSRS is the seventh position in this list. But what really what we want is NA. That means we we that says this record is not over there. So we're simply going to wrap a true false logical formula is NA is an A around this result, and anytime it sees an NA, oh. it'll return true. All right? Now, at this point, we have our trues here, but if we left it like that, we'd still have to build an array formula because there's duplicates. So we're simply going to do a little trick here. I want to take this and add it to the one above. The reason we're doing that is true, if you add true and false, one will re be reported here. Then there'll be a one here, a one here, and when it gets down here, the formula here will say true plus one, which as we copy this down, we'll, we'll have one, one, one duplicates here. This will say two. So that'll be our trigger. One, two, three, four. All right? Control number Enter. But the problem is this formula is saying a number plus whatever's here, that's a word. So we don't want to use the plus symbol. We want to use the sum function. And we're not going to use that plus symbol. We're going to take advantage that the sum function can have values being added, separated by comma. So I'm going to comma. All right, so I've done this same trick um, in the last month a few times because it's just a great way to have a helper column to allow us to look up. Now, there it is. One, two, three, four. Those are the records. Now, the great thing about a straight lookup like VLOOKUP, or we're going to use index and match, is that it'll only catch, because there's duplicates in this column, it'll only catch the first one. All right. So now we need um, to tell our formula here to show a blank after it reaches the last record, which is 4. So I'm going to use max. Give me the max of all that. That tells me how many records we're interested in. Um, and then we want to use index. Now, in this video, we used VLOOKUP. If this column right here was the first column here, you could just use VLOOKUP. But we're, it's not in this case. Uh, so we're going to have index and match together do the looking up. All right, so the array. This is the array that we want to return. Remember, this whole table is what we want to return records over to here. I'm going to highlight just the first column, and then I'm going to lock just 
the row reference, not the column. So I hit F4 key once to put two dollar signs in, and a second time. That means the row, as we go down here, the 6 is locked and the 16. So as we go down, this doesn't move. But as we copy it over this way, that E will move to the next letter F. And so these dancing ants will move over. right? And that's exactly what we want. When we get to the username column, we need the username, comma. And what are we going to? Um, how does index work in terms of looking something up? We need a row number. No problem. What is it that we're actually looking up? One, two, three, four. So we're going to use the match. The lookup value for match is, well, in this row we need one, because we need that record. When we move down to the next one, we need two, because we want to get that um, record right there. So no problem. We're going to use a number incrementer. Type in the rows function. I'm sitting in J6. So I'm going to type J dollar sign 6, locking the 6, colon J6. This cell reference, and I should scoot over, the rows will increment numbers. So as we go down, it'll give us 1 in this row, 2 in this row, 3 in this row. All right, the 6 is locked but not here. So when we go down to the next row, rows will ask the question, how many rows are there? It'll be 6 to 7 down in this row. Right now, it's asking the question, how many rows are there from 6 to 6? 1, which is exactly what our lookup value should be, comma. The lookup array is this, F4 locked in all directions, comma. And then the match type, we absolutely want 0 exact match. And what's so cool about that is that's the part of this, this lookup that will ignore all the duplicates. So it will only see 1, 2, 3, and 4. Skip over all the other 1s and 2s, etc. Close parentheses. On the match, the match is going to deliver row number for the index. Close parentheses. Control Enter. Copy it over and down. Now I'm going to format this first column here. So I'm going to highlight and control 1 and add some sort of date like that. And now we need to turn off this. Uh, down here, it just there is no um, 5 in here, right? So that part of the match right here, right here, if I highlight it, 6 to 10 is, is, uh, should be 5. So if I hit F9, which is the evaluate key, F9, it gives me 5. Well, there is no 5. Index says, I mean, match says there is no 5 there, Control-Z. So it says not available. Escape. We just need to turn this off. So we're going to amend this formula. When we get down past the fourth row, we need to show a blank. So we're going to say if, in our same number incrementer, If that number is greater than this, and I'm going to lock it in all directions, well, when this gets to 5, 5 is greater than 4, what do we want? That's, that's the logical test. And then what we want is comma um, blank. So I'm going to put double quote for true. Comma, otherwise, what do we want? We want to run this uh, lookup formula. Close parentheses, Control Order Enter. 11. Copy it over. Now it's carried the date format over, so I'm going to uh, point to the uh, s smart tag here and say fill without formatting, and then I'm going to double click and send it down. So there we go. That is how to extract records. And for example, you could, um, so this one is there. If I change this to blah, 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 like that, mm. then immediately it would be extracted. So this is a dynamic setup. All right, we'll see you next video.